بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد بداية تقبل الله صيامكم وقيامكم وكل عام وأنتم الله تعالى أقرب المحاضرة هذه هي المحاضرة السادسة for the second course for the subject called medical biology I am Dr. Walid from uh, University of Hombar College of Dentistry Today I'm going to give you some information about basic bacteriology and before I start with the basic bacteriology I would like to start with the pathogens what's the meaning pathogens which pathogens can cause the disease for the human body or the even so to the uh, plant or animal the first uh, microorganism that causes uh, disease to the human is bacteria um, Today, I am going to give you some information about the bacteria, uh, the structure of the bacteria, genetic material of bacteria, and as well as which antibiotic can affect on bacteria. The second microorganisms is viruses. Maybe next lecture, I am going to give you some information about viruses. And the parasites, parasites of her, we have already taken the, uh, some lectures and first course in uh, general biology. Uh, in this year, in this year, sorry. And the fungi, the fungi, I'm going to uh, to give you the fungi in third third stage. Uh, so today I am going to focus on bacteria. And second lecture will be viruses. What's the meaning bacteria? Bacteria are prokaryotics. Already we have good knowledge about what's the meaning prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Eukaryotic, that means that uh, living things that contain the uh, genetic material with the nucleus membrane but the, with the bacteria and viruses these microorganisms uh, doesn't has doesn't have the doesn't has the uh, nuclear membrane surrounding the genetic material the characteristics of the genetic material for the bacteria and viruses uh, single closed uh, DNA. Let me show you like this, but a lot of fold, folded. Okay. Now uh, let me let me give you some information that have already taken it about the size and the shape of the bacteria. We have the three main shapes of the microorganisms, especially for the bacteria. Uh, the first one is the coccus. Cocci, sorry. Cocci, that means it's like it's like ball, it's like it's like football. It's cocci. And bacilli is like a stick, it's very long. And spirochetes. Spirochetes is like a drill. The, one of the most important examples for the spirochetes is the H. pylori. Helobacter pylori. This bacteria can causes the uh, peptic ulcer disease in the stomach. The size of the microorganisms is a range between the 0.2 to 5 micrometer, and the smallest bacteria called microplasma. And uh, this bacteria are about the same size as the largest viruses. This is viruses called the uh, boxy uh, viruses. We can see in this image some of the shapes of the bacteria. For example, here we can see the uh, staphylococcus. It's, it's called staphylo. Staphylo, that means it's like grape. It's like a grape, okay? And here we can see, and uh, uh, we can see just here, stick will be a grape. <laughs> and uh, here we can see the stick. It's like a stick or it's like uh, a chain, sorry, not a stick, it's like chain. So this is called Cetococcus. That means uh, it's like a chain. We can see here, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, bacteria uh, joined to each other. And this is called Diplococcus. And others, this will be Bacilli. We have Diplo, 
double 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 cell of the bus lie joined to each other and this will be single and we can see here this is a spiral sheet spiral sheets it's like a drill it's like a drill it's like this Uh, structure of the bacteria is quite important to understand how the uh, which the structure consists of these microorganisms because because if I can understand each single uh, structure that means maybe I can find good antibiotic to fight these bacteria because some of bacteria will be good and some of them will be very bad for the uh, human especially for the human and animal and the plant so I we need to understand uh, how these uh, organelles uh, working to stop them if these bacteria will be uh, bad. So one of the most important things here, we can see the genetic material. This is got a chromosome and the ribosomes. Okay. And these as well called the plasmid. The plasmid give the microorganisms good extra characteristics for example like uh, antibiotic or something like that we can see a flagella flagella as well is quite important for the microorganisms because uh, the movement organs because of the bacteria we need to move from and from the uh, place to another place ha uh, have to has to use uh, these uh, uh, organ or these uh, flagella as well as we have cell membrane it's like human cell but there is no cholesterol in the chemical structure uh, we have here as well as uh, this is called peptidoglycan and outer membrane attach light this is will be the, 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 the allow to bacteria to teach uh, to attach to each other to transfer some of genetic material or something like that some of bacteria has extra structure like for example mycobacterium tuberculosis this bacteria causes the um, pneumonia or tb in human this is capsid and this capsid uh, the chemical material uh, will be special because this is uh, most of uh, the chemical material of this capsule will be polysaccharide and proteins Let me start with the nucleus. This is the first structure of the microorganisms. And the uh, uh, nucleus in general is called in, in bacteria nucleotide or nuclear body because there is no uh, nuclear membranes around the genetic material. And the composition of the uh, nucleotide or a nuclear body consists of the polymer polyamine sorry sorry and magnesium ion the magnesium ion compound to the negatively charged with the phosphorus group in the DNA structure and as well as will be this is circle okay like a ring uh, uh, super coiled that's mean a lot of uh, a lot of circle folded uh, uh, to each other double strand DNA double strand DNA that's mean we have for example if you have adenine here we have thymine here okay this is called uh, the double strand DNA if you have single strand DNA some of viruses contain just single strand DNA would be like this okay okay this is single strand and this double strand RNA and the small amount of RNA RNA is quite important to translate and trans transcription uh, to, tra to transcription the DNA to the R messenger RNA and then will be translated the RNA to the proteins and as well as the poly RNA polymerase is a quite important enzyme that converted the RNA to the messenger RNA and others protein will help bacteria to uh, to do about uh, uh, for example uh, mechan uh, activ uh, activation or activity metabolic activity for the microorganisms <laughs> cytoplasm the most of microorganisms contain the cytoplasm cytoplasm is like in human but in human cells 
uh, this uh, structure, uh, all the, uh, let me see, all the uh, activation, all the uh, biological activity occur in the cytoplasmic, for example, like uh, replication and uh, protein synthesis and others, all these uh, biological activity occur in the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm gel like matrix uh, composed of the water, enzyme, nutrients, weights, and the gases and contain cell structures such as ribosomes. So ribosomes, as I mentioned before, is quite important to synthesize the protein and the chromosomes. This control on the biological activity for the bacteria and the plasmid. This is well, as I mentioned before, uh, give the microorganisms extra. Uh, characteristics, for example, antibiotic or something like that, uh, resistance or something like that. Uh, each single bacteria has approximately uh, 2,000 ribosomes, uh, bear each uh, cells, and these ribosomes are quite uh, is important to translate the messenger RNA to the protein to do something. Ribosomes, as I mentioned before, ribosomes use the microorganisms to synthesize a protein. Without a protein, the bacteria cannot uh, stay alive. So we need to study the ribosomes. Sometimes, why you need to study the ribosomes? Because I need to stop a very bad bacteria to grow. Or maybe I can kill this bacteria if I can understand which antibiotic is suitable to bind to the ribosomes. But firstly, I need to study the structure of the ribosomes. Bacterial ribosomes contain protein and RNA. That means that each single ribosome has proteins and the RNA. Uh, the proteins in prokaryotic and RNA prokaryotic will be different in eukaryotic. Let me show you which is the difference between them. Bacterial ribosomes have sedimentation coefficient of 70 Sperberg. Sperberg, that means this uh, sedimentation rate. Uh, that means if I put uh, the ribosome in centrifuge, that means I need 70, uh, 70 part of femtosecond. Uh, femtosecond, I mean each, for example, I need to divide it each single second to the one uh, one to the 10 sorry 10 to the 11 uh, minus 11 minus 11 that's me I think 1 billion okay 1 billion that's mean I need 70 part of the uh, second of the vimto second to uh, to per precipitate this is micro uh, this is a uh, uh, the, the the parts of the ribosomes. Uh, these ribosomes can consist to two parts. The first part called 30s and the second part called 50s. Okay, each one called sub subunit. This subunit 30s we have gene responsible to produce 37. This is gene called 16s. Okay, 16s. This is gene and a chromosome, bacterial chromosome, responsible to produce this part of the ribosomes. And as well as we have two genes responsible to produce large subunit, 15, spare pair, okay, ribosomal RNA. This gene called 23S, or ribosomal RNA, and 5S, or ribosomal RNA, this is gene responsible to produce this part of the ribosomes. Actually, there are a lot of the antibiotic combined to the either with the 30S or 50S to, or maybe with the 70S after combined to each other to prevent uh, the bacteria to produce the protein. Uh, the protein, as I mentioned before, is quite important for biological activity. One of the most important antibiotic called erythromycin. Erythromycin can bind to the 17S, but not with the 80, 80 ribosomal 
uh, RNA. This is uh, belong to the human to the human uh, cells. The bro prokaryotic ribosome are about 20 nanometer in diameter and are made of 35% ribosomal proteins and 65% of RNA. That means the ribosomal consists of, for example, this is a protein and for example, this messenger RNA, just in percentage. It's not like that. The shape is not like that, but this is just percentage. 65, 2 to 3, 1, 2, 1 to 3, 35, okay, 35. Uh, let me show you which the difference between the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic ribosomes. We can see prokaryotic, the ribosome consists of 70 ribosomal RNA, and each one has two subunits, the large subunit and the small subunit, large subunit and the small subunit. And as mentioned before, the gene that are responsible to produce the sub, uh, large subunit called 5S, this consists of 120 nucleotide, this is a nucleotide, and the uh, 23 uh, ribosomal RNA consists of uh, 2,906 uh, nucleotide. Okay, and this is small unit. Small unit, we have gene. This is gene called 16S uh, ribosomal RNA. This is consists of 1,542 1, nucleotide, and these responsible to produce uh, small subunits in the uh, prokaryotic. And the eukaryotic, we can have C60 and 5S, and sometimes we can see 5.8 or uh, 5.8, or sometimes we can see 6, it's called 6, okay? And this 121 and 165, and we have C here, the third one is the uh, 25, 25, you have, you have three genes here responsible to produce the 60S, okay, this is 5017 nucleotide. But the, with the uh, uh, small large, or so small subunits, we have 40 uh, uh, ribosomal RNA, the gene responsible to produce these, uh, these subunits called 18 uh, ribosomal RNA and consists of 1,868 uh, 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 nucleotide. We can see it. This is ribosomes. This is the large subunit. As I mentioned before, we have two genes in prokaryotic to produce. One of, of them five and another one uh, uh, 30, uh, 20, uh, 30, uh, sorry, 23, uh, 23, yeah. 23, this is responsible to produce sub, uh, large subunits. And these small subunits called 16S ribosomal RNA, okay? And this is the differentiation between eukaryotic and the prokaryotic. We can see here, as I mentioned before, the ribosomal consists of the ribosomal RNA with the proteins. With the, with the small subunit, we have uh, 30S with the 21 proteins, and the, with the subunits with the uh, uh, two, uh, two uh, ribosomal RNA with the 34 proteins. But the prokaryotic will be different because we can see on the 60 we have 50 proteins and the 33 proteins with the small subunits. Plasmid is extra chromosomal. Plasmid is, is not is not important for bacteria to to stay alive or to stay survival 
because this is as I mentioned before this is give the bacteria as extra characteristics like for example the whole structure of the uh, for bacteria is the plasmids the plasmid is the small as I mentioned before is for small and circle extra uh, chromosomal DNA molecules with the cell that is basically, uh, basically uh, separated from the chromosomal DNA and uh, can replicate it independently. That means we can we can find, for example, um, six or seven or maybe eight uh, copy of the plasmid in the same bacteria. Or sometimes you can see hundred uh, copies of the plasmid in the same micro in the same uh, bacteria. The function of the plasmid is the, uh, uh, to, to add extra characteristic properties or characteristics like uh, antibiotic resistance variance factor or their own transmissibility to other bacteria. You can see here the plasmid and the bacteria and the number of genes in the uh, plasmid. Most of the plasmid consists of two or three genes in maximum. These genes are responsible for the uh, resistance, for example, antibiotic. Cytoplasmic cell membrane, this is one of the most important structure in the bacteria. This is called as well cytoplasmic membrane. Uh, it's the most dynamic structure of the prokaryotic cells. Its main function is the selective permeability period that regulated the pass, passage of substance into and out of the cell. It's like exactly like cell membrane in the human cells. Bacterial membrane are composed of the 40% of the phospholipid. 40% of the composition of the uh, cell membrane structure of the bacteria is the phospholipid and 60% proteins. The composition of phospholipid bilayer is the similar in microscope appearance to that in eukaryotic, that means in human cell. They are chemically similar, uh, but in eukaryotic membrane contain cholesterol. That means in prokaryotic there is no cholesterol, in eukaryotic there is cholesterol. And the cholesterol, as you know, gives some rigidity for the cell membrane. We can see here this the cell by bilayer cell membrane bilayer phospholipid. Uh, we can uh, see here as well as the we can see here this is integral protein and this is peripheral protein. For the cell wall. The cell wall is quite important as well because we can classify the bacteria according to the cell wall. Because a gram positive bacteria consists of the cell membrane, this cell membrane, and as well as we have another layer. This is layer called peptidoglycan or maybe called the uh, periplasmic space and peptidoglycan. This is quite important because this is will provide the protection the, 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 the protection of the microorganisms. This will provide the protection of the microorganisms against the, uh, for example, antibiotics or, for example, some enzymes that can degrade some proteins or something like that. Is okay. This is in a gram negative, uh, gram positive bacteria, and the gram positive bacteria for can consists of more than 70 layers in each bacteria on each. Uh, bacteria belong to the pos positive cell envelope. Why they call the pos uh, gram positive? Because as you know, in the first course, we have taken the gram negative and the gram positive stain because the crystal violet can penetrate the can and then would combine with the other compound to compare to to compare sorry to to form. Uh, complex inside the peptidoglycan. Some of them will go out, but most of them will stay here because we have thick layer. 
Otherwise, on the other hand, we can see here we have six or seven layer of the peptidoglycan in the gram-negative cell envelope. We can see here one, two, three, four. This is very thin layer of the peptidoglycan, but we have another structure. This is a structure called outer membrane. Uh, the outer membrane consists of the, uh, uh, other uh, other chemical composition. But before I start with the outer membrane, I would like to give you the chemical structure of the Peptidoglycan. We can see here peptidoglycan consists of the N-acyl muramic acid. This N-acyl, uh, N-acyl. Sorry, this is N-acyl uh, glucose amine, and this N-acyl muramic acid. Okay. This is N-acyl. This is N-acyl uh, glucose amine, and this is N-acyl muramic acid. Okay. And this is the one layer. All of them, this is one layer. For example, this is the cytoplasm, this is the cytoplasm, and this is one cell cell wall. Each cell wall, this is consist of one acyl mucamic amine, glucose amine, one acyl glucose amine, one acyl glucose, one acyl uh, muramic acid. Is okay, like this, and etc. Okay, this is the first layer. The second layer will will will. Uh, will attach to each other using some of the amino acid to like this okay and this as well like this like this okay and uh, an as an 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 acid contain will touch will attach or will bind with the four amino acid these four amino acids is quite important for for from this layer and for from this layer and there is a bridge from the glycine this is a glycine amino acid five one two three four five and join to each other like this exactly you can see here you can see this exactly here let me see let me remove all these things okay we can see here this is an acyl uh, muramic acid and as well as this and acyl muramic acid and from another layer this is the first and this is the second layer and we have alanine uh, uh, gluten and lysine uh, glutam glutamate acid uh, this lysine is alanine and this is alanine as well glutamic acid glutamate and lysine and alanine and uh, the joint between the alanine and lysine by glycine five glycine we can see one two three four five okay and we can see here inner membrane or cyto or cell membrane and the peptidoglycan and the outer membrane i mentioned the outer membrane just found in the gram negative bacteria gram positive bacteria there is no this structure just in the gram positive bacteria okay this structure just in the gram negative bacteria and outer membrane consists of uh, two things it's like inner membrane it's like bilayer phospholipid but we have another structure this structure called lipid a here we can see this is lipid a and as well as we have core polysaccharide this core polysaccharide and i have o antigen or o polysaccharide this that's mean we have a three structure consists of the uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the outer membrane, with the bilayer, with the outer membrane, this is called outer membrane. Lipid A corp polysaccharide and O antigen called lipopolysaccharide. That's mean if you give you an exam, for example, in an examination, uh, the outer membrane consists of you have to say phospholipid with plasmic space, uh, sorry, phospholipid bilayer and lipid A core. Uh, polysaccharide or, or antigen or you can say lipopolysaccharide the antimicrobial chemotherapy we have uh, a three main type we have a lot but i am concentrated on this because this is quite important for the microorganisms especially for the bacteria for example inhibition inhibits the bacteria cell wall biosynthesis if i need to kill the microorganism or stop the growing i have to attack the cell wall or sometimes I have to attack the protein synthesis to prevent uh, bacteria to grow or to kill bacteria. 
and as well as the nucleic acid synthesis. We have some of the antibiotics that can prevent the nucleic acid synthesis or protein synthesis or cell wall bio synthesis. In general, there's in, in general antibiotic drugs can either bio uh, uh, bacteria static that means can inhibit the growth or to stop the growing for the microorganisms or it's called bactericidal that means this bacteria can kill this antibiotic can kill the microorganisms directly let me start with the inhibits uh, inhibitors of bacterial cell wall biosynthesis one of the most important antibiotic called penicillin penicillin is quite important why because the penicillin has uh, ability to uh, dispense penicillin. This is called beta lacta. This is active site in beta lacta and cephalosporin as well. This okay because the uh, the penicillin has ability to bind to the transpeptidase. Transpeptidase is called as well penicillin binding protein because this transpeptidase has ability to bind with the penicillin with the beta lactam uh, and uh, transpeptidase this is responsible to uh, make a bridge between the amino acid between an acyamuramic acid from the first layer and acyamuramic acid in the second layer so okay that mean will inhibit this bridge and the rigidity of the cell wall will be very weak and then will uh, bacteria will be very weak to stay alive for a long time. The second uh, one of the antibiotic is the inhibits bacterial protein synthesis. As I mentioned before, the ribosomes is quite important because the microorganism can use it to produce the proteins. So we have 30S, some of the drugs can inhibit 30S or some of drugs can inhibit the 50S, okay, substance. Okay, this is one, two. One of the most important for the gentamicin, aminoglycosidase, this is called gentamicin, can inhibit the, for example, 17 uh, uh, initiation complex. That's mean we cannot bind to each other. This is the small and this is the large. When I use the gentamicin, for example, I, the, these subunits, large subunits and small subunits will prevent to attach to each other, okay? And then the ribosome cannot produce the uh, RNA uh, uh, proteins. Some of the microorganisms uh, will be sensitive for the chlor chloramphenicol because the chloramphenicol will prevent peptide transferase to bind the micro, to bind the uh, amino acid to each other. That means we cannot elongation for, uh, for elongation the, for example, if you have a protein consist of, for example, 100 amino acid, uh, each single amino acid needs peptide transferase to, to 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 bind with the another micro with the another amino acid. But with the chromophenicol will prevent this is attachment, will prevent this is bind like that. This is bind between amino uh, and uh, this is will prevent to bind with the amino acid. This is amino acid. Okay, this is amino acid. As well as is this thromycin as well as will uh, prevent the elongation of the peptide as well. Maybe in the third stage we'll take it in details with the pharmacology. Inhibition the bacterial nucleic acid synthesis. We can use the, for example, some of the drugs can attack the DNA gyrase. DNA gyrase is quite important to 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 synthesis the DNA. Uh, some of them we can use rifam scene, for example. This is called uh, depend on the RNA polymerase. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention and the question please send me your question feel free to use email or google classroom thank you and i hope you can understand what i said assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh